I have to be authentic to myself. If I'm not authentic to myself, then what's the point of doing this? Like my history, man, like my people's history, you know, like they didn't give up their culture, their way of life, their faith. They didn't compromise anything. They would rather, they took death instead of doing that, you know? And they stood up for like, not just themselves, but other communities for their, their freedom to, so they never compromise. So I'm like, if that's my history, man, I can't say yes to this because like, I'll be spitting on my ancestors, man. So I was like, no, you know, that for me is of utmost importance. Culture is of utmost importance. When I was like coming up with some ideas, I got some right, ideas right. for y'all. Yeah, man. I, I, got, I got one that I think is cool. Okay. But I got one that I think is like, it's the one. Okay, dope. I'm and pumped, I'm, man. When, as soon as you texted me on Monday, I was like, yes. <laughs> Almost got kicked off the Nas tour at 21. What? My first national tour. And I uh, almost got kicked off because they didn't like the press shots I was wearing. They didn't like that I was wearing my turban in the press shots. Booked a photographer, we did, we did a shoot, sent the photos to the promoter, right. and the word I got back from my people was, uh, they're saying I need to reshoot photos without me wearing no. a turban. Otherwise they can't use the pictures they can't put me on the tour and i said well you know why well, i'm not taking new photos i'm not sending them new photos that's me you know Nas is one of my favorites you know hugely influential to me and i'm thinking to myself well he doesn't re he wouldn't represent exactly. that message so why is the promoter or whoever's sending this message communicating it like that but at that at that point i'm like it wasn't even a, i didn't even second guess myself i didn't even second guess myself to be like you know what no uh, if it comes down to it you know i, I just want to do the tour i went with like the punjabi sample yeah yeah you know and the way it came about was I was at my parents' house just messing with samples. Mm. And my mom walked in and she's like, what are you doing? Mm. She's like, you know what? When I was five years old, I'll never forget, back in um, Jordan, mm. it's like, my brother, my her older brother, she's like, my brother took me to watch this Indian movie. She's like, let me show you. So she pulled up like, she, her phone and she goes, oh no, she went, she's on my laptop. She's like, go on YouTube, type in the movie. And she pulled up like this clip of like one of the you know, musical yeah, yeah, yeah. numbers in the, in the thing. And like straight away I heard something and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be freaking sick, like I really like the way, and then she played me something else, and the second one, I was like, nah man, I, like the first three seconds of the video, yeah. I was like, go back. <laughs> <Play Yeah. it." laughs> That's why on the record, man, we had to use the samples that we used, you know, we yeah. had to pull those sounds. We had to have those stories be told even lyrically. And Yeah, and it's a, it's a fine line, I think, when you're dealing with samples as well, especially cultural samples, because they've been so exploited. And, and you know, and you, I guess that's, 
you know, having these samples that you, you want to use and it not be cheesy and it not be, you know, it's a, it's, be it's out. A, yeah, it's, it's a craft and I, you know, I think we nailed it. Shit, yeah, yeah. man, I think it's like, if there's one thing I'm trying to communicate at the very least is like, I don't want to lose it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to lose yeah. the value of yeah. it. Bringing that value out of the music, I think is pivotal, man. I think we did it.